What up, people? Welcome to the Doing Everything Different podcast. I'm your host, Devin Lars. And today, I was thinking about different topics of, of how and where I wanted to kind of position this podcast and thinking about the episodes, thinking about the different guests that we, you know, we want to get on. Uh, I think we have a really cool lineup of people coming up. Uh, and so, yeah, looking forward to being able to kind of expand the content and uh, the different topics and reach. But today I wanted to talk about the five things I wish I knew before I started my business. Now I've been doing this for almost two decades, which is crazy to even think about. I started off in, in 2005 in high school, uh, started off airbrushing um, t-shirts and different things like that. And so for those of you that kind of don't know the full story is that's when it started in 2005 airbrushing and kind of figuring it out no business background no um really entrepreneurs in my family uh and so it was kind of one of those things where i had to figure all this stuff out on my own uh, my business partner and i and it was it was a lot of stuff that from that happened from uh when we started in our garage of just airbrushing t-shirts and now uh, running an agency that works with some of the biggest brands in the world helping with um, nationwide executions and campaigns from working with Starbucks and the Warriors and um, Nike and Sequoia Capital and Cisco and all of these different companies, um, these big brands. We've learned a lot along the way and just scaling from doing everything myself to now having a full team and kind of the process of what I've learned during that. And I, and I think these things that I want to share, the five things I want to share can really translate to any kind of work related things, whether that's, you know, a career and you're trying to kind of move up in the company, whether that's freelancers and you're trying to um, start a side hustle or whatever it is. I think these principles kind of are, are tried and true. Um, and so, yeah, it was just, it's something that I wish I would have known early on. So the five things are number one is self-awareness and accountability. Number two is there's always a solution and your job is to find it. Number three is learning how to delegate in the power of a team. Number four is don't be afraid to evolve with the times. And number five is your business will never grow past your personal growth. And so I think these are, I mean, there's a ton of things that I've learned, you know, during this process, but I think these are the five most important things uh, that in yeah, there's there's so many, so many things, but I think these five are a really good foundation to kind of start with and stuff like that. So I'm going to start with number one, which is self-awareness and accountability. When you are running a business, it is all on you. It is your fault. Whether it's an employee that messes up, whether something happens, whatever the case may be, it is your fault because you hired that employee, you put them in that position. You train them on a certain way of doing something or didn't train them on a certain way of, of doing something and everything falls on you. And I think that if you are thinking about entrepreneurship or if you're currently an entrepreneur right now, whether you have employees or not, it's something that you really need to think about because a lot of times it's easy to point the fingers and blame. And that, and that was me in the beginning, right? I remember our first few employees when they would mess up, it'd be like, man, what are they doing? What, why, why would they not do this? But when I really had to look at it, I wasn't giving them the tools and the resources they needed to be successful in whatever it was that we were trying to do. And so I think it takes extreme accountability and extreme self-awareness to be able to um, build any type of business and, and company, because there's going to be a lot of things that go wrong. And I think that I mean, there's, there's a million and one things that are out of your control that you can't um, predict. But I think the things that you can do is the things that you can control, right? I, I think every time that we've went through different growth spurts, every time that we've went to the next level in our business has always been around focusing on the stuff that we can control uh, and, and not worrying about the external factors, right? Having to navigate through COVID was crazy, right? Like our whole business changed and it was, there were a lot of things that were out of our control, but we just took accountability for what we can do. And we said, okay, how do we set up the processes and systems and just really get tight internally to be able to grow? So I think that's a, a huge 
important factor when you're thinking about a company is it's that self-awareness and extreme, extreme accountability because there's nobody to blame. Whether you win or you lose, granted, you have a team to help you get there, of course, but the decisions are on you and how you kind of navigate and how you think about building whatever it is, you know, thinking that they're looking ahead of all the stuff of like, okay, am am I doing the right things that I need to be doing? Am I able to, um, am I really able to be able to take this to where I want to go? Do I need to hire a business partner? Do I need or, or bring on a business partner? Do I need to hire some employees and let this go because I'm not good at it? Those are things that you need to get really clear within yourself. And you have to be honest, because if you're not honest, it's, it's, it's only going to mess you up. So I think really looking in the mirror and having that accountability and saying, okay, everything that that goes on, especially that's wrong is my fault. And so how do I fix it and put the pieces in place to um, be able to make sure that that doesn't happen anymore? Because I think that there's so many things that go wrong. Um, and it's just a matter of looking in the mirror and trying to uh, take accountability and, and figure out what you can do to fix it, which kind of leads into to number two, right? There's always a solution and your sole job is to find it. Like being the, the um, leader of a company and trying to navigate all of the different things that come up, there's always going to be problems. There's always going to be fires that come, come up. There's always going to be something that you have to fix. And I think that in the beginning, so when I first started, my, my old business partner and I, we were airbrushing and, and naturally things just go wrong, right? And I remember I would always, and I've said this before, but I would like always focus on the problem and I would dwell on the problem and I would just be so upset that this thing happened and thinking like, oh, the world is ending and this, this and this. And I remember when my, my old business partner would come in, he would take a break and he would come back and he would have a solution of, of how we were going to fix it. And I just, I just remember it just, it really was like, how do you keep coming up with these solutions and how to fix it? And he was like, look, you're focused on the problem. I address the problem, but then I find a solution because focusing on the problem ain't going to do nothing for us. It's not going to get us out of the problem. And so I remember that time just really completely changed my life. And, and if there's anything that I would say that is the most important out of these, these five things that I learned. I feel like this is the most important because in life, things are always going to not go according to plan. Things are always going to change. Things are always going to happen. And your ability to respond to those situations is going to determine the outcome of those situations. And I think that I used to react, right? Like I used to react, something happened, I reacted. And then I realized I need to start responding to these and taking my time and being thoughtful around it. And how do you do this versus it just feeling like it was, you know, a reaction to something. Um, it kind of it was able to take more control over that. And so there's always a solution if you are in anywhere, if you're freelancing, if you have a side hustle, if you have your business, if you're working a corporate job, if you're whatever it is that you're doing, this is something that's going to be tried and true in your career and just in life, I found that it's just, it's super, super, super valuable. Now, number three is the power of a team and learning how to delegate. This one was hard for me. Delegating was hard because I think when you get so caught up in having to do everything on your own, especially in your business in the, in the beginning, it's hard to let some of that responsibility go. And I think there's a couple things that cause that. I think one is sometimes we feel that the person may not be able to do it as good as we can do it. And so we're like, okay, well, it's not going to get done like how I want to get it done. So I'll just, I'll just do it. Or we think that it's going to take more time to try to train the person on how to do it versus just doing it like, oh, I'll just, I'll just get it done. Uh, or you just don't even think about it. Sometimes you're just, you don't know about delegating. For me, it was just like, I just was so in go mode and I was so in just get it done, just get it done, just get it done. It was hard for me to ask for help and it was hard for me to receive the help. And I think what was 
interesting for me is once I started to once I started to let go and, and delegate, I, I started to almost kind of feel guilty. Like I, I thought for so long it, w- it had been the busy work that I had done that I thought was getting me to where I want to go. And if I wasn't doing that busy work, I felt like I was being lazy or I wasn't like doing the things that I needed to do. When in reality, my time was shifted somewhere else. So my time was shifted in like, okay, looking at where we're going. So, you know, they have that cliche saying like, um, work on your business and not in your business. Like I realized my team needed me to be able to look ahead, to not be in the internal day-to-day work of it, but be able to help with strategizing and, and giving direction, but letting them execute on it. While I'm over here kind of looking ahead and, and, and planning and kind of seeing where, okay, where's the world shifting? Where's the marketing shifting? Where is technology shifting? And how are we going to use these uh, things to our, our advantage? And I think it was something that was, it was a hard transition. And I, I remember I was having a conversation with my mom and I was just telling her like, I just, I, I just can't delegate. I'm just not good at it. And she was like, look, you brought on a team. Like you hired a team, you're trusting them. That's your team. Like let them, let them be able to do it. Let them execute. They can do it. And I remember that it was something that it wasn't so much of that I couldn't delegate. I think I had just got into a habit of just getting things done. And so she suggested that I get some sticky notes and I write delegate on them. And I kind of like stick them in my, you know, kind of like on my computer and stuff just to remember. And so my crazy self took it to the extreme and I wrote, um, discipline and delegate. And I signed the sticky notes and I, I, I probably made about at least 20 of them and I stuck them all over my apartment. So I stuck them on my coffee maker. I stuck it on my mirror, in my bathroom. I stuck it on my printer, my computer, the refrigerator, the, by the front door. I put it everywhere around the house. I had these yellow sticky notes that said discipline and delegate. And I signed each one of them. And I think what that allowed me to do is I would always see these yellow sticky notes everywhere around my apartment. So it forced me to keep that on top of my mind, like top of mind or whatever. And what I noticed, what it did for me is every time I would go to do something, I would be reminded by one of these sticky notes, like, hey, is this something that I need to be doing? Or is this something that I can delegate and hand over to my team? And it was it was a transition. It was hard. It it was hard at first because you have to break old patterns. And I think as entrepreneur, I mean, I think as as people in general, it's so easy to get caught up in patterns. And then once you're in a cycle and a pattern and a habit, it's really hard to break. You have to really make a conscious effort because I think once you do things for so long, it kind of starts to become second nature where you don't even think about it. It's just like you, something happens and you, you do it. And I think in order to evolve and, and break those patterns, for me, I needed something visually that I can see that was a reminder of like, hey, you do you really need to be taking this on? Do you really need to be doing this? And so that was that was one of the things that transformed our business. Once I once I really learned how to delegate and I really learned how to ask for help and accept the help and understand that my team can get it done. And they're going to get it done better than me and faster than me. And I realized that I was actually getting in the way, you know, and that goes kind of back to the the self-awareness and accountability. I realized I was stunting our growth because I kept getting in the way because I was the bottleneck and stuff because I needed to do it versus, okay, somebody on my team has the bandwidth to do it, hand it over to them, allow them to do it and step back so you can focus on something else. And yeah, that was, that was a big one for, for me. And I think during COVID, it really, it really forced me. Um, it really forced me to have to think about it and and to try something new, and and it worked really well. I, I think, yeah, it's been one of the things that has completely transformed us and got our agency and our business to where we are today. Is the power of a team and delegating? Because what do they say? If you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together, or whatever it is. I always be messing up quotes, but. You guys know what I mean. And I, I think it's, it's, it's so true. Teamwork is everything. And it's something that's so important. And I, I'm, I'm so thankful for my team now to even be able to do this in this podcast and this content that we're doing and 
everything that we're doing is the power of a team. You know, it's, it's really being able to let go, delegate, find the right people for the job, and then figuring out the processes and procedures that you need to do to put it in place to make sure that it's running effectively and smoothly and making sure the team has what they need too. You know, I think a lot of times uh, business owners think the employees like work for them, but it's like, in reality, like you work for your employees, like you need to make sure that they're good because there's so many different options. There's so many different things that places that people can go. And I think if you don't provide, if you don't provide an environment and an infrastructure for them to be successful in their job and to be able to help them, they're just going to go somewhere else, you know, and I wouldn't want to work for something like that. I wouldn't want to work in a company like that. That's not giving me the resources and tools to be able to do that. So I'm like, okay, how do I create an environment for the team that I would want to work in that I want to work in? And so, yeah, the team, the team aspect has been incredible. Uh, I think, you know, some people will say like, you just hear some people, right? That's, that's just straight business talk. That's all oh, your team is dispensable or, or disposable and all this stuff. And it's just, it's so crazy to think about how like these companies think of their employees as numbers versus like people and understanding like people have challenges, people have ups and downs and, and having empathy around that is super important. And I think crafting and curating that environment for people to be able to be themselves and for people to be able to um, go through the ebbs and flows of life. And, you know, there's going to be certain times that challenges come up and to be able to create a space and um, be okay with that, I think is, is super important. So that kind of goes to building a team, the power of a team and, and delegating that is super important. And I, I wish I would have understood it earlier. Cause I, I think that, yeah, things could have been a lot different if I would have kind of let go earlier. Um, but everything happens for a reason. And it is something now moving forward that will, I will always keep at the forefront of everything. Number four is don't be afraid to evolve with the times. Technology is happening. And it's it's coming fast. I mean, with the rise of AI and chat GPT and all of these different things. And even just the world, how it's changed with COVID remote work and all the things it's like times are going to change and your business should change as well. Because if you're just sticking to the same thing, if you're sticking to what worked in 2018, 2017, 2015, chances are, it's not going to, you're not going to keep up with the times and you're going to get left behind. And I think a lot of, a lot of people sometimes get held into this idea of this is how it, has always been and this is how it should be. And I don't I don't think that's the right mentality. I think that yes, there's certain things that are tried and true and you need to keep the main thing the main thing, but when things happen, you need to be able to adjust. Like in COVID, and I keep going back to COVID because it was it was such a transformative time for all of us and I think our whole business model basically changed overnight and we had to adapt and we had to come up with how are we going to survive this? And how are we going to be able to operate around this? I've been through so many different evolutions with my business, started off airbrushing t-shirts. And then I realized, oh, from a standpoint of production, if we have to airbrush every shirt by hand, it's going to take forever. There's no scale to this. So let's look into screen printing. So we evolved into doing screen printing, which was mass production. And then we were doing screen printing for however many years, 10 years, and then we saw the rise of where social media was and storytelling and all these things. And I'm like, oh, this is another element that we need to add on. And we're not just screen printing. So then we turned into an agency, a marketing agency, where we took these two components of screen printing and we took the component of marketing and advertising. And we kind of brought them together in this kind of unique way where we blend the digital marketing with the physical products in the in the world. And I wasn't I wasn't scared to evolve and to change. I remember when I told my team that we're starting a, a, a advertising agency. A lot of people, when I told them we're starting a marketing advertising agency, when we were just a screen printing shop, they were looking at me like I was crazy because they're like, "Wait, you're a screen printing shop? How are you going to do advertising? What are you talking about? You don't know anything about that." And I didn't. I didn't know anything about advertising and marketing and an agency. But I was like, "All right, we're going to figure it out because I've seen this opportunity." with the way the world was shifting and storytelling. And I said, we need to be 
a part of that. We need to be a part of the creative and the conversation, not just so much of the production and the back end of it. And so I think as you're starting to go, look at different opportunities of how you can shift. I always use this example, and I think it's such a incredible example of not being afraid to evolve and kind of looking at the pieces. So the movie Founder is the story on McDonald's and how McDonald's was kind of created. And I tell everybody, like, go watch this movie. If you haven't watched Founder, or even if you have watched it, go watch it again. Because I think what I what I really took away from that movie was they were selling burgers and fries and they were growing and they were building and they were growing and, you know, things were moving forward. And, but they got to a certain level where they were getting stuck. You know, he was, he was, Ray Kroc was getting like, you know, stuck on the finances. And he's like, why am I so behind? We're like growing like crazy, but we're not making money. And so then somebody overheard them talking in the bank. I don't know exactly how it went down, but the guy was like, you're not in the hamburger business, you're in the real estate business. And that shifted everything for them. That one idea shifted everything. They were doing the same thing. It was just, they organized and looked at the business in a different way. And so a lot of people are that one shift, one idea, one adjustment, one evolution away from everything changing. So don't be afraid to be open-minded and to be able to figure things out and test things out and see what works. Cause you never know what your original business is in five to two, five, 10 years may not look the same. It may have the same DNA, right? It may be the same kind of business. For instance, McDonald's still sells burgers and fries, but they own the real estate and they franchise it out. So their business is, is the same type of business, but the structure of it is different and how they approach it is different. So maybe if you keep getting stuck and you can't find why is this not working? Why is this not working? Try evolving it a little bit. Try changing things. Try adding things. Try looking at it from a different angle to see, okay, I'm I looking at this right. Is there something that I can make an, a, a little adjustment that's going to change everything? That is such a huge, that's, that's, that's such a huge point in business, entrepreneurship, and just the evolution of life. Like things change, you know, chat GPT is out. I mean, you can literally be a solo entrepreneur now that now has the power of like 20 people. You know, you can be a freelancer now that can scale your work like crazy because you don't have to sit here and like a freelance writer, you don't have to sit here and write every single thing. You can have this tool that can help you. So now you can direct this tool. So now essentially it's like you having a writing staff, right? So now freelancers have the power to be able to utilize these technologies. So things things change, you know, things evolve. And I don't think you should be scared of the times. Again, it goes back to there's always a solution. I have the mindset where there's always a solution. You just have to find it and figure it out. And when there's a lot of, when there's a lot of like uncertainty and a lot of things that are unknown, that's when a lot of opportunity happens. And it forces you to kind of think, okay, I got to evolve or I'm like, this isn't going to work. And so I think that pressure of having to evolve is good because it makes you it makes you think. If you go back to the accountability and the self-awareness and you say, okay, I am going to figure this out. And then you go and you figure out what are those little tweaks that you need to make. It could be all the difference. It literally can mean all the difference in your business and change your entire life. I, I, I swear here are one text message, one phone call, one relationship, one conversation, uh, one tweaking your business away from everything changing. I can 100% contest to that. This is, it has completely changed our business being open-minded and, I, and, I, and, and not being fearful of evolving and changing. And it could work. It, I've, I've witnessed it in my business several times and it's not just something that happened once. It's so many times we've had to, we've had to iterate so many different times. And so I don't know, just think about it. Don't be afraid to evolve. Don't be afraid of technology. Don't be afraid of the change. It's something that can present new opportunities. And so the last one is um, your business will never grow past your personal growth. This is something that was so interesting for me because 
again, going back to the, the self-awareness and accountability, I was always the problem of taking my business to the next level. It wasn't external forces. It wasn't, it wasn't the economy. It wasn't whatever the case was happening. It was me. And I think once I really looked at that, I didn't have the skills. I didn't have the knowledge. I didn't have the resources. I didn't have the maturity. I didn't have the, um, the minds, the right mindset. Every, every time that I look about that, what got me stuck in my business was always because of me. And every time that I developed myself and made myself better, the business would grow. And I realized there was like this weird correlation because again, everything is on you. So if everything is on you, how do you expect your business to grow past where you are? And I think it's something that I, I, I firmly believe and kind of like some takeaways and what I learned from that was around a lot of the stuff was going to therapy. A lot of the stuff was like, why do I self-sabotage myself? Why do I get in a position when everything is, is going well and everything is, is working? And then I just, I self-sabotage myself. I put something in the way to make it more challenging than it should be. And so I realized, I'm like, why do I keep doing this? And I'm, I'm like, why do I want to feel like I'll put something to self-sabotage or put something in the way and then I'm coming in to fix it. So it's giving me this like adrenaline rush and it's giving me this, this feeling that I'm like, oh, I'm accomplishing something. It, it makes me feel valuable to be able to come and fix something that I call a problem that I caused. And so I realized I'm like, why is that serving me? And so it's just really doing the work and starting to figure those things out and understanding why do you keep putting these certain things or why do you make life more complicated than it needs to be? can change your life and 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 not only in your business but just your life in general your relationships um and just your your whole experience um this life experience it, it really it really is something that i i can't even explain it like you have the power to change your life and i think that this is something that i realized when i stopped competing with everybody else and I stopped worrying about what everybody else was doing. And I looked in the mirror and I said, oh, damn, this is the only person that's in my way. This is the person I have to fight. It's, it's nobody else externally. Like those people are irrelevant. It doesn't matter what your family say. It doesn't matter what your friends say. Like they can't stop you from doing anything. You are stopping you from doing something. And I, I think that we have a lot more power than we give ourselves credit for like we can change our circumstances, no matter what happened to us in the past, no matter what we've been through, no matter wh whatever, we've all been through stuff. And some people have had it at varying degrees and, and a lot worse than others. But what I learned is that if you really want to make a change, if you really want to grow, if you really want to do something different, you have the power to do it. You just have to have that extreme accountability you have to look at yourself in the mirror and say, okay, I want to fix this. And, and why do I keep doing this? And that's why I'm, a, that's why I'm an advocate of, of therapy, because what that allows you to do is it allows you to see things that you can't see. Because most of the times it's hard to fix something or it's hard to get out of something by yourself. If you got there, it's kind of hard to get out of there. So I think the outside perspective is the therapist isn't going to get you out of the thing. I think what the therapist does or, or coach, however, whatever you want to call it, whatever the person is, even if it's not a therapist, if, even if it's somebody that's close to you, what, what that person allows you to do, it allows you to see the blind spots and it allows you to, they have a, a different perspective, an unemotional perspective. Sometimes our, when our emotions are all caught up in it, it's hard. We don't see the reality of it. We think it's one way because we feel a certain way, but in reality, it's not that. And so having somebody with the outside perspective, especially somebody that's, you know, kind of trained in how your mind works and to, to make you question why you're doing the things that you're doing and, and putting pressure on you to say, but why do you do that? You know, it, it's something that is really beneficial. It's really beneficial. It's really beneficial. You have, we all collectively have 
the power to change our circumstances. Nobody outside of us can help us grow or change. If we don't want to do it, if somebody, what, what I learned is if somebody doesn't want to grow and somebody doesn't want to do something, there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do to help them with that. The person has to be willing to want to make that change or whatever it is. And so I don't know, just something, something I was thinking about. Uh, I, I, hopefully this will be helpful to somebody. Uh, I, I think again, these are just things that I wish I had, you know, when, when I was coming up, um, and just like trying to navigate. And I did have a lot of it, you know, I had a mentor, I had several mentors in my life that have helped me with that. Um, and sometimes people can tell you certain things, but you have to experience it on your own because it hits different when you go through it versus when somebody tells you. But what I'm trying to learn now as I'm getting older is why if somebody has went through it and granted their story and journey is going to look different than you, but if somebody has went through it, why don't you listen to it instead of going and having to bump your head yourself. You know, somebody says, Oh, it's a low bridge down there. You need a duck. And it's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And you hit your head. It's like, okay, you could have listened to them. And so now I'm starting to learn like, okay, maybe I need to duck. Let me, let me just listen before I, you know, hit my head on something when somebody warned me on it. And so, yeah, that's, that's what it is. I think this entrepreneur game is, is crazy. You know, I, I think work in general is crazy, right? Freelancing, side hustles, corporate gigs, so many things are changing. And so I'm excited to, as we start to build this out, we're working on building out this community where we're working on helping with this transition of the new workforce. Like, what is this going to look like? What does freelancing look like? I think they said by 2027, the majority of the workforce are going to be freelancers. And so we wanted to create a community that has resources and tools and community of people that are not just entrepreneurs and starting businesses, but side hustles, freelancers. Like, what does it look like of the future of work to be able to like really create some meaningful work that has impact in people's lives that creates the independence to be able to have the freedom to do whatever it is that you want to do? You know, it's so crazy to think about how and the majority of it is right now. And, and there's some professions where you have to be in there, but how so much of your life is centered around work, right? You live where you work um, and you have to live in that proximity and you have to look at the schools. Like that is, that is an interesting model to say the least. And I think that there's so many opportunities now with work and the way things are changing where you can have the freedom to work remote. You can have side hustles. You can have freelancers. Entrepreneurship ain't for everybody. I, I'll just be straight up about that. You know, I know it's cool right now. And I know people are like, you know, I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to have a business, but you got to have a, you got to have the stomach for it. It's, this is not for everybody. But I think what's interesting and what I'm seeing, there's a lot of opportunities to like freelance where you can still have a job and you can do, you can have a side hustle where you can freelance and do stuff. And so it's interesting. There's a lot of people on my team that are freelancing, um, that are doing good. Things are picking up for them. So they have a full-time job and they're freelancing and have their, their side hustle. And so I think it's the, the future of work. And so we wanted to build a community to help with resources on that to not just with entrepreneurship, not just on the business side of things, but then also the, the mindset, like how do you approach building relationships? How do you approach working with different companies and all of those different things? And so I'm really excited about this. This is something that I'm very passionate about, and it's something that my team and I are passionate about of, of like pouring into. So if this is something that you're interested in, you can visit doingeverythingdifferent.com backslash community and fill out the preform. Um, I'm not sure exactly when we're going to launch this. We're still in our pre-building phase. We have the platform pretty much all built out, and we're going to start accepting people in it um, in it soon. So yeah, so if you're interested in it, you can check it out at doingeverythingdifferent.com backslash community. And um, yeah, I hope you guys have a great week. And until next time, go birds. Thank you.